people in Paris. Chestnuts in blossom. I love Paris. And here with me is Julia Brown. She is an expert about Paris. Would you say that? Um, I have gathered quite a bit of information and brought quite a bit of knowledge since um, working in Paris since 1994. And what I love is to share it. So expert and, and receiver of information. And one of the things that I really like about Paris is something that a lot of people don't know. They know the Eiffel Tower. They, some people don't, though, delve deeper into some of the finer points, and that is blacks in Paris. And Julia, that's one of the things that you know because you do tours. What is the name of your company? My company is Walking the Spirit Tours of Black Paris, so Black Paris and Beyond. And what is it that you show people in Paris? I show them a side of Paris that most people don't know. I show them where African Americans made history, personal history, social history, and professional history for themselves in Paris, and then put the African Americans on the map in France and created and contributed something to the French society. We're now going up um, Avenue de Clichy, and we are heading towards Place Clichy, but on the right-hand side, you can see straight away a place called the Casino de Paris. And this is where the 369th Harlem Regiment, who I said were honored on the Champs-Élysées, they went back to New York, reformed, and came back and played at the Casino de Paris in a room called the Perroquet Room. They played there for six years. And the African-American musicians here, um, they were considered, nobody else knew how to play jazz. And when the clubs decided that they wanted the French musicians to play jazz, they didn't, the French musicians thought, well, this isn't real music so they didn't want to play it. So this is the hot spot here, the Casino de Paris. When Josephine Baker came here in 1925, uh, she was not the first to arrive. A woman named Bricktop. Has anybody heard of Bricktop? She, um, she got here before Josephine Baker got here. Um, she was called Bricktop because she had bright red hair, but Josephine said it was because she also had a temper of the Irish as well, which wasn't surprising because she was half Irish, half black. And something that a lot of people no, I'm sure is that one of the places that blacks went to, Negroes, they were called back, what was it, during the 20s, 30s, and 40s, they went to Paris because Paris was a place that they found freedom. Absolutely, and not just freedom of movement, but freedom to create. There was no um, set things that they had to do for artists. They didn't have to. They didn't have to create black images. They could create whatever was in the in their heart. For example, if you look at Henry O'Tanner's work, he didn't particularly stick to black images, but he created what he saw around him. Um, and the same with writers, they they could choose whatever was in their heart to create. And and so artists, writers the intellectuals, the musicians as well. One interesting moment was the 1900 exhibition that Du Bois put together. The idea of the exhibition was to show progress after the failures of Reconstruction. But to go from slave to free, that is your accomplishment, <laughs> to be a person, to be self-possessed, you know, rather than being possessed. Tanner is the first African-American to achieve international status as a painter, as an artist. I often uh, quote uh, James Baldwin who said that when Americans come to Paris, they discover the terms by which they want to define themselves. And that was truly the case with Tanner. What are some of the things and some of the places that you will show people when they take your tour and they come to Paris? Okay, if we go right back to the beginning of when African Americans came to Paris, one of the first people we know was Sally Hemings. So when we go down the Champs-Élysées, that famous avenue, the most beautiful avenue in the world, it was right there at Champs-Élysées, Rue Berry, where um, Sally Hemings lived. And Thomas Hem Jefferson had a residence there when he was the diplomat there. So Sally Hemings was right there. A block away from there was where Josephine Baker started in 1925, her first show that knocked people out. And so we go there, we go into the Latin Quarter, where you see where Richard Wright lived. You'll see where James Baldwin lived. You'll see where they hung around the literary cafes with the French intellectuals. But you'll also see also where there is a place now place Josephine Baker, Josephine Baker Square, you can actually stand there and get your picture taken. And so there are starting to be places where you can visit and there are signs. When you said bonjour, I don't speak French, but it is good to be able to say a bonjour 
to a Parisian, just to say that greeting makes them feel, I do believe, and help me and correct me if I'm wrong, that you're trying to be nice, that you're trying to say something. You don't have to speak fluent French, but it's not, to them, at least you're trying again to, to be hospitable. Is that correct? It is very much so, and it's also that France is still very much a formal society. There are rules and regulations for etiquette. So, for example, if you go to into a store and you say bonjour, it just it's the way you open the conversation, but it's also acknowledging that person is in that store. But uh, I mean, in their language. But in their language, yeah, in their language, that's you. You need to know how to say bonjour, au revoir, merci, and maybe to order a coffee or something. But it is they they appreciate the effort that you make. And they may just turn around and start speaking English to you because they want to practice their English too sometimes. Please tell us your website, how we can find you. I'm at walkingthespirit.com. And you can find me through the website and through our blog, which is Spirit of Black Paris as well, but also on Facebook and on Twitter. I love Paris and I love talking to you, Julia. Thank you. A bientôt. Paris, Paris, Paris. C'est sur la terre un coin de paradis. Paris, 